So we've just arrived down on the course and I've had to put my head cover on it because yet again, these clubs do not tend to come with a head cover. You know what? I'm dying to see how this one actually performs. So come on, let's just start by peppering one away right now. Let's get some baseline numbers and see what this PX3 driver goes like. You know what? I love the dome shaped feel as I look down on this. Let's wonder what it sounds like too. That feels so much better than the other PX3 driver I tried. Higher pitch, more lively feel. And check out these numbers as a starting point. 163.5 ball speed, 112 cupboard speed. Come on, you give me that. And let's have a look at the rest of them. 288 total. And let's have a look at that carry. 256 yards carry. Now we're just getting warmed up. Let's hit some more away. Decent start though, right? Now you might be wondering why exactly have I got this PXG driver? Well, for one very, very good reason. I was trying to find an absolute bargain and a PXG club for cheap. But the question is, even if you go cheap, is it a waste of money? So I decided to buy a PXG 0811X Proto. After a lot of hours of actually digging around on all secondhand sites, this is what I found. So let's see the club. But let's start off by quality of this head. Like there's a few marks on it, but I think that's that matte finish which would give you that sort of look. But overall, and this has hardly been hit. He's done it again, found a bargain. You place it down, like I said this a minute ago, it's sort of domey shape, isn't it? It's sort of quite rounded, quite domey at the top. Sort of get that look there. Look, can you see? It sort of feels really quite domey across that top line. It feels compact. And I guess there's a reason for that. It is made for Golfers with a relatively fast swing speed. Now, compared to the 0811X, the 0811X Plus Proto is a slightly higher spinning option. And PXG say this model is built for golfers with an upwards angle of attack and mid center of gravity. Now, the 0811X Plus Proto driver appears to have a deeper face than the 0811X. Now, I would actually still class this driver in a lower spinning category, but a higher spinning version of this product. But it offers huge adjustments to trajectory and ball flight easily done with the new four weight system. So essentially the difference between the PXG Gen 2 drivers and the Proto, it now uses the larger same weights that they use in the PXG putter range with you can get five, seven and a half, 10, 12 and a half, 15, 17 and a half and 20 gram weights available. This basically means you've got the adjustability in these weights to fine tune your trajectory. Now, one thing I do not know is what weights are in the bottom of this. But based on that last shot, I was quite happy with that. It seems a pretty good setup right now. It's also an adjustable driver. You've got one and a half degrees either way. I just got this set on standard for the sake of this test. Now, I tell you this every time. When I test drivers, I demand a lot for them. I demand that they produce good numbers. So for me, baselines, 160 ball speed, over 110 club head speed two and a half thousand spin and over 260, 270 yards carry. Now the minute that's a little low, 256, spin was a little high at 3,100 on that first shot. Let's hit three more away here. Let's see what this driver delivers. But my first opinion is this look and feel of this driver is everything I would look for. The matte finish, the carbon effect, the domey sort of feel, it feels compact. Also, just to let you know, the shaft that I've got in here is an Acra 2.0 260MS. Made in Japan. It looks pretty fancy. Maybe if you're more in tune in shafts, let me know if that's any good. So let's hit more away. Now, this is the second ball I've ever hit with this PXG driver. And I have to say, the flight, the noise, and the feel of the face still does surprise me. When I've hit PXG drivers in the past, I've been a bit like, nah, it's felt dead off the face. Now, after trying this and hitting a few shots now, there's just a few things that aren't adding up. I'm seeing great ball speed, club head speed's good, but I'm just not seeing that turn into good distance. I mean, have a look at this flight. That's still a beautiful looking shot, but it's just not quite hitting the spot. Let's try more. So it's now time we just have a look at a few of these reviews on forums online. And I always find these very, very interesting to see what real golfers think of these drivers. So let's jump home, have a look at these reviews. 
Now, this is the first review that I found, and I find it quite interesting how this one was dated 1st of June 2020, and they noticed that it had a very different sound, kind of muted and a little harder to tell if you hit a good shot. Now, which is surprising because I actually found this PXG driver a little more, I guess, higher toned, and I felt like I did know if I hit a good shot or not. Now, one of the bits of this review says, you can feel it though, and I agree. There is a spot that launches the ball. The shot is super addictive. I'm still working on getting comfortable with the face open. I hit a draw and I've struggled to hit a fade for a long time. Interesting, and I think this is down to those weights. So if you have a look at the next couple of reviews here, played my second round with the 0811 Proto X Plus driver. I'm getting it dialed in. I'm you I have set I have set it to draw bias set up and after struggling to keep the ball off the tee heading right for weeks I couldn't send one right today and I think this is what the beauty of this driver is if you have the wrench you have the ability to change the weights you're actually using the driver to its maximum capability equally if you're a golfer who spins it too much you can change the weights from front to back and make it a more low spinning driver I have to say this reviews are relatively positive and the next one here, I had the surprise offer today and played golf and got there just before our tee time. Against my better judgment, I took my Ping G430 Max out of the bag and put my new PXG driver in. First drive, default, four screw setup, and most forgiving mode. And I had some left to right mo movement. And I immediately switched it over to the draw bias. Every drive, the rest of the round was straight as an arrow. So the reviews are very positive. So isn't that interesting to see what reviews of real golfers in those forums? I'm yet to see the difference in these weights and we'll talk a little bit about that tech in a second. Let's hit three more away. Now I'm not sure on this driver. This wind's picking up right now. So it'll be interesting to see what this actually performs like now. Oh, a little bit tugged that one. A little bit off the toe side. I'm enjoying the sound of this driver though, I'll be honest. It's a lot better than the previous PXG drivers that I've hit that I felt like they had nothing to them, but dull out of the face. And I guess the question is, is this an absolute bargain of the century for fast swing speed players? Now I'm not seeing too many low spinning shots. I mean, one thing I would say is the spin's not particularly too high. Let me know if you've tried this driver before. Like I've mentioned in this video so far, I like the domey look. That one was a little bit off the toe, that last one. Let's see if we can get this one a little better. Oh, that was absolutely snorted. Till that wind's got up a little bit now. More off the right. 166 ball speed. 111.1 club head speed. Like, they are really good numbers. Let's have a look at the spin. 292 total. I know it was a little bit pulley, but let's have a look at that spin and that carry number. 2.4, right where we want it to be, and 2.54. These are pretty good numbers right here. I'm getting the spin we talked about at the start of the video. Oh, that was absolutely smoked. I love the feel and the sound of this driver. It's bizarre though. I'm not quite getting the distance I would expect in terms of carry. 2.44, 3.141 spin. That sort of jumped up again and that felt right out of the middle. So let's talk a little bit more about these weights in the bottom. Now PXG say that moving these weights around and buying different weights make radical changes to your ball flight. So if maybe you don't quite have the right shaft, maybe there's a way of finding a good option just by moving these weights around. So you've got one here at the bottom, two, three, and four on the outer. So essentially, if you put the heavier weights towards the front more, this would make it a low, low spinning. Moving the weights heavier towards the back and the outer edges, you could make it a little bit more high spinning if that worked for you. And I guess a little bit more draw and fade bias by putting the weights on the opposite sides or a heavier weight there. Also, you've got to take into account that these weights are sold separately, but I'm sure with a bit of digging around on eBay, you could definitely find some more of them. So what do I think of this driver before we hit the final two drives away? Now, I love the sound, I love the feel. The ball speed that I'm getting is higher than I thought, but I'm just not quite seeing that correspond into long carries. Yes, some of these totals have been over 290, but as you all said on the video, we're not bothered about total, we're bothered about the carry. And I get it, right? Because we live in England and there's not much roll all the time. So 
Love the sound, love the look, love the feel, much better than the previous PXG drivers I've tried. But let's hit two more and go through the overall data. Again, two absolutely stonking shots straight down the middle. I can't fault this driver for accuracy. I really, really can't. But what's the data like? So this driver. Now, one thing I would say is, is it suitable? I think it could be, just for the fact that it offers quite a lot of adjustability for the price point. Yes, you've got the loft options, but also if you were to buy further weights, and caveat to this, I'm not actually sure how expensive these are, insert a picture here of how expensive these weights are, and even if you can find any, I think this offers a good amount of adjustability for high swing speed players that other drivers at this price point don't offer. Now, when you're buying secondhand right, it's hard to get a shaft that matches. It's a little bit of, okay, I'm gonna find the driver that looks okay condition, roughly around my spec, and maybe the shaft isn't right. And this leads me to the numbers. Remember, this is just all about buying cheaper drivers, and we're looking at the OA11X Plus. It's a terrible name, Proto at the end as well, isn't it? I mean, what a mouthful. But let's talk numbers. So ball speed, I averaged around 163 miles an hour, way above what I would want it to be. So this is why I'm a little bit surprised at the carry. My average carry was only 253. Now bear in mind, I tried a driver from 1999 the other day, you saw it here on the channel, link down below if you didn't see it, and I was around that same number. And this is because that spin was sky high. I averaged just under 3,000 spin, 2,902, which is really quite high. There was a few in there like you saw that I got going really quite nicely and lower spin, but there were few and far Oof. between. The ones that I'll get off the middle weren't quite right. And that goes back to that point of maybe buying some different weights, maybe trying a different shaft, but was pine second hand. Have we, do we really have that option? Let me know if you've actually gone out and bought a different shaft. That's maybe what I need to do if this is an option. And then the final number we're really bothered about is club head speed. It was on the high side, I would say, or medium side, averaged 112. So over my 110 threshold, which is really quite good. But for me, I just didn't quite see the numbers that I would go, you know what, pop that in the bag. It was the best PXG driver I have tried, but just not actual perfect numbers for me. With all that being said, I do think for high swing speed players, it is a very good option. However, I don't have the screw, I don't have the adjustability, because I bought it second hand. So, but you know what? It was so good to take this driver out on the golf course, find a bit of a bargain again, and see if you can get a good low spinning option for a fraction of the price in 2024. Do you think it's a good option? Ah, I'm gonna go back on what I said. I really don't think it is. I like the sound, I like the feel. It just didn't produce the numbers I would expect. I'm gonna go back to the thing though, it maybe needs a little bit of tinkering, but for sure, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn the bell so you keep up to date with all the videos we have here on How Good Golf.